Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Cheryl the Craft Nut 32 and today I'm making this super cute card with you. I'm using the Law Fun stamp set Ocean Shelfie and this card was a lot of fun to make. So to start off I grabbed my stamp perfect. I put a scored piece of cardstock which is four and a quarter by eleven and I fold it at the five and a half mark. And I'm gonna start off with this super cute octopus right in the center. I'm gonna ink him up with some memento tuxedo black ink and I'm gonna stamp them out and then I'm going to grab all of the other little ocean critters and bubbles that I'd like to use and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna grab that same ink and I'm going to stamp where I'd like them on the card. I'm gonna continue with my stamping um, but first I am going to grab some masking, tape, masking paper and I'm going to stamp the same images on that stamp Oh, sorry, on that masking paper because I'd like to create some masks for some ink blending later on with this card. So I'm going to use some blocks that I have to stamp out some more of the ocean scene. I'm going to stamp this really cute little pearl in its shell. And this, I don't know if it's a squid or an octopus, but he has a stamp. And that fish has a lot of little bubbles. And then I'm going to stamp that cute rock. So I want to add some cute leaves, but first I was thinking I'd like to mask off the rock so that way the seaweed can be behind the rock. And here I'm not really sure what to do. I'd like to add more seaweed, but I haven't really thought it through. So I'm just going to stamp it off on my masking paper because I will need that for later. And I think I'm going to put the next little bit of seaweed behind the shell. I guess that's a clam with a pearl in it. So I'm going to cut that clam out and I'm going to adhere that to the card as well. So what I'm going to do next is grab my Spectrum Nora markers. I have three colors I'm going to use for the octopus. And what I like to do is grab a scrap piece of paper and just kind of get a sense of the true color. Sometimes I find with these markers the color isn't exactly as it shows on the marker lid or on the end and so I like to color it just to get an idea of exactly what it is and just make sure I have the colors that I'd like. So now I'm going to carefully remove those masks so I can use them again when it's time for ink blending and that way I can color those cute images as well.
Now with the coloring complete and covered up with their masks, it's time to grab my distressings. I'm going to use Tim Holtz distressings and I'm going to start with some antique linen, vintage photo, and walnut stain. I'm going to grab my Picket Fences blender brushes and some other brushes I've gotten off of Amazon. I'm going to begin with creating the sand at the bottom of the card, kind of like the bottom of the sea. I'm going to start off with the lightest color and I'm going to work in some of the darker colors. Once I'm done with the sand, I'm going to move on to the colors for the ocean. I'm going to grab some salty ocean, some mermaid's tail, peacock feathers, chip sapphire, and blueprint sketch. First I'm going to start off with some salty ocean and I'm going to give the whole top area of the card. I'm going to give it a nice light coating of the blue. Kind of give it like a nice base to work from. So I realized I had a little bit of ink on my finger and I've left a fingerprint on where on the bottom of the card where the sand is. So I grabbed my mono eraser and I just sanded it off. And I'll come back to that later on in the card. So now I have the Wave Builder Stencil from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to start off by using the two different colors alternating between Mermaid's Tail and Peacock Feathers. I like that Peacock Feathers has a little bit of green, kind of gives it like an ocean theme. And Mermaid Tail is one of my all-time favorite Distress Ink colors. So whenever I can, that's one I reach for quite often. So I'm just alternating between the colors, giving it like a nice wavy look as much as possible. And now I'm going to grab some blueprint sketch just to kind of give it some balance around the edges. A nice deep look, hoping to create the, the illusion of depth. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go back and I've grabbed some more vintage photo and I'm just re-inking the area that I had sanded. So I've grabbed some walnut stain distress ink, I've put a little bit on my craft mat there. I have a water pen and I'm just splattering on some of the ink just to give the sand a nice pebbly look. So I have this liquid shimmer from Lawn Fawn. I have loved this liquid shimmer lately and I've been using it everywhere. I put a little on my mat and I have another water brush that I'm just splattering all over my card. And it leaves a really nice um, shimmery effect as well as some watermarks for the ocean look too. At this point I'm peeling off all of the masks and revealing the card. I'm going to save as many of the masks as I can. So I've grabbed my stamp set. And I'm just finding some Blake areas to put a lot of those bubbles because there's only one. Otherwise, I try to put the image on top of the um, stamp on the stamp set whenever possible. And now I'm just kind of looking it over and I love how everything has turned out. I'm grabbing the sentiments that I'm going to use and I'm just lining it up with where I think it should look um, the, the easiest to read on the card. I'm going to once again grab my Stamp Perfect and it just ensures a nice clean stamp and if I need to I can re-stamp it. So with that stamp in position for where I'd like it I'm going to go ahead and put my card into the Stamp Perfect, use those magnets to hold it down, grab the stamp with the lid, and I'm just going to use the X-Acto knife to make sure that card doesn't pop up too. A lot of times with the clear stamps, the card, like it's just a really sticky stamp and I find there's a little bit of pull on the card and it just repositions the card. So with that done, I'm looking at the card and I'm realizing the rock is very similar color to the sand from the distress inks I used. So I grabbed two darker browns and I have um, just recolored that rock right over top of the other color. And the other thing I've noticed is that squid in the top right corner is very similar again to the ink that I decided to use. So I've just grabbed a scrap piece of paper, I've re-stamped that squid, and now I've colored it in with a nice bright pink. I'm only going to color in the top and cut out the top and I'm just going to glue it right on top of the existing squid right in the top right corner. Before I do that, I have my Memento Tuxedo Black ink um, marker and I'm just going around the edge to make sure none of the white will show up around the edge of the new stamped image. 
I have some Lawn Fawn ink that I've used to glue it down and a really big heavy block just to put right on top to kind of make sure that it stays in place as it dries and then to help it dry a little bit quicker. The finishing touch is grabbing is I grab some glossy accents and I'm giving some dimension to those air bubbles. And with that, the card is complete. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love the sparkle and the texture. And this was a lot of fun to make. Thanks for everyone who stuck it out to the end. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I'd love to have you back. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.